Portugal just basically doubled taxes for foreign residents overnight. Well, the inevitable has come. Is it time for Americans to pack their bags and move on to places like Italy and Cyprus where advantageous tax regimes are still in place? As you may have already seen, the Prime Minister announced earlier last week that they were canceling the non-habitual tax regime, which allowed foreigners to pay a max tax rate of 20% for up to 10 years. And it didn't just apply to foreigners, but also Portuguese nationals that left and came back after five years or more. Many Portuguese people that I know that left to take on an internship or study abroad were hoping to come back to Portugal and use the NHR on their return. If you don't know me, my name is Dave in Portugal, and I've been making videos about living in Portugal for the past two years. In this video, I am going to discuss if Portugal is even still worth coming to. Quick disclaimer, I am not a tax expert. This is just research my team and me have been doing. I would highly recommend talking to a certified tax expert for advice. Now let me start by saying that this only affects people that wanted to live in Portugal for six months or more and actually become a tax resident. This has nothing to do with the resident visas that Portugal still offers and is still one of the easiest ways to citizenship in the European Union. Now many Portugal natives have been celebrating this as a win because they are sick of seeing wealthy foreigners take advantage of this tax scheme when it is not available to them. I mean, could you blame them? In the Prime Minister's own words, the NHR is a biased way of inflating the housing market, which has reached unsustainable prices. Currently, Lisbon has apparently become one of the most expensive cities to rent in in the European Union, along with cities like Amsterdam and Paris, which is absolutely crazy. Which to the Portuguese people that have to live on one of the lowest wages in Western Europe, many have been gentrified out of their homes and communities. But not all think that canceling the NHR is the right solution. This is what a Portuguese tax expert and member of the AFP Portuguese Tax Association had to say. For good and for evil, it is undeniable the importance of non-habitual residents in the economy and in particular in the creation of new professional opportunities, essential to the young people of the country. Wow, I highly suggest reading all of João's article. There is a link in the description below. Now, one thing that we do know for sure is that people that are already enrolled in the NHR will get to keep it. But a question that has been making people lose their minds on Facebook and Reddit is, when will the deadline to be registered for the NHR actually be? The Prime Minister of Portugal said that the NHR would be ending in 2024, but if that is January 1st, 2024 or the last day, December 31st, is still unclear. And nobody will know for sure until the legislation is available to the public. But for a little bit of context, the Golden Visa took over a year after the announcement for the legislation to actually pass. But does the NHR actually have any relation to the inflated house prices at all? The NHR has had around 89,000 beneficiaries so far since the program has been created, although some sources say that only 10,000 are currently enrolled and still living in Portugal. That would be 0.1%, a number so low that it seems unlikely to influence the housing market even in just Lisbon. So why was the NHR even created in the first place? The NHR was born during the global financial collapse of 2009 as a way to soften the blow of the catastrophic economic effects in Portugal, which was one of the hardest hit countries in the entire European Union. It was created as a means for attracting qualified professionals and the competitiveness of companies, something that Portugal, in comparison to the rest of the European Union, ranks rather low in. Examples like the Scenish Project, a hyperscaler data center, that was estimated to create 40,000 new qualified jobs in Portugal are examples of some of the benefits of the NHR. But with the good also brought some bad. In the beginning, countries from all over Northern Europe started moving to Portugal to take advantage of the generous tax breaks, add Brexit to that and then a bunch of Americans finding out about Portugal, and Lisbon became the hottest place to move in Europe. 
Now, it is important to note that during the past 10 years, the Portuguese government has allowed fire sales on literally entire city blocks in Lisbon and Porto that were sold to foreign companies, which many turned into mass-managed Airbnbs. But there's no way any of this could have anything to do with the housing crisis in Lisbon, right? Now, New Yorkers are no stranger to what having more Airbnbs than having available housing does to the locals that live there. And as of recent, New York has implemented strict regulations that make it almost impossible for Airbnb to continue its activity there. Now, I believe the biggest impact for people wanting to come to Portugal are retirees. People who wanted to come to Portugal to retire on a pension and only be taxed at 10% will now be subject to a progressive max rate of 48%. So if your pension is over 75,000 euros or dollars a year, you will now be taxed at 48%. Now, I think you would really have to love Portugal to go from getting taxed 10% on your hard-earned retirement money to a whopping 48%. If you're interested on exactly what you would get taxed, you can use a free calculator at mytaxes.pt. This is a free service that I am in no way affiliated with, just a cool tool to use. This also affects entrepreneurs and remote workers that were making income in a foreign country. So if you were planning to move to Portugal full-time after 2024, be expected to also pay up to 48% in taxes if you make over 75,000. Now, one thing that really made Portugal a lot less attractive is that even bordering neighbor Spain has much lower tax rates for people in the middle class area. One of the big problems that a lot of Portuguese I hear complain about is how much they're taxed for making so little. So for instance, if you are making $30,000 a year, you are still subject to a 37% tax rate. This one I think is really important. Portugal was courting high value activities like dentists, engineers, architects, and computer programmers, pretty much anything with a good degree. Now, Portugal has great universities that are highly respected internationally, but many of these young professionals from Portugal that graduate from these colleges leave Portugal for better opportunities in other parts of Europe or the world. I have some Portuguese friends that left to go study abroad and intern for five years or more and were hoping to return to Portugal to take advantage of the NHR system, where they were willing to take a pay cut to come live in Portugal with their families uh, if they were going to have a break in the taxes. But now a lot of these professionals are probably gonna look elsewhere in places like Spain, the United Kingdom, or United States and Canada. Now to add a little bit of optimism to this, I wouldn't be surprised if Portugal introduced another type of regime or incentive in the future for foreign investment or foreign workers. As we saw that it was a roller coaster to get the legislation passed on the gold visas, and we'll see if it's the same with the NHR. And once again, to quote João's article, the idea that remains once again is that the government behaves like an elephant in a porcelain store looking to solve the housing problem and on its way to political survival through the adoption of ill thought out measures and at the risk of causing much greater damage. For now, Portugal's reputation is at stake. Spain, Italy, and the United Kingdom and other countries with competing regimes rub their hands happily. <laughs> so is this just some sort of knee-jerk reaction from the government to point a finger at someone to save face for upcoming elections? Let me know in the comments below what you think. But in my opinion, if Portugal doesn't figure out how to court and keep young professionals in the country, they're going to lose them to other countries in the world. Now, here in Europe, there are alternative countries that still offer advantageous tax regimes. These are the consensus in the tax community. One that you hear a lot is Cyprus. You also hear about Italy and Malta. If you're looking for beautiful weather still in Southern Europe, these may be good options to look into. 
Now keep in mind that Portugal still offers one of the best pathways to citizenship in the European Union with their D-Series visas. Now, if you're still interested in moving to Portugal, I will be releasing a complete moving to Portugal guide on davenportugal.com and sign up for the mailing list to be one of the first ones to get notified about this guide. I would love to hear in the comments below from my viewers how this affects you and what you think about the cancellation of the NHR. If you want to see more videos about Europe and Portugal, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button because I will be posting videos like this every single week on this channel. This is some guy named Dave in Portugal and we'll see you next time.